Hello everyone, this is Mike again for you with another video and today we are taking a look at one uh, nice gentleman. His name is Ralf Schneider. He is from Germany but living in the USA and, uh, and his videos are all about menswear, sartorial stuff, uh, classic menswear and today we are taking a look at 12 expensive products for men which are worth their money. So let's go. Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video we discuss 12 expensive products that are worth their money. He's a really nice guy if you are uh, into, let's say, uh, men's wearings, uh, ties and all these kinds of luxury, luxury stuff. I like to watch him and he's also a friend of Herbert Stricker. You probably know him as the King of Fragrance. Uh, some appearance uh, also made it to my videos. And I watch his videos myself. I've had all of these products for years and because of that, I know they're worth it. In this list, I list things that are either downright expensive or things that are relatively expensive compared to other items you can get on the market. If you've watched our videos in the past, you know that I always encourage you to invest in quality items because quality items get better with age versus cheap items deteriorate over time. Yeah, that's a very interesting point. Yeah, um, I have to admit that some of my suits are already 10 years old, but they are long lasting. It's just handmade quality stuff and for that reason it uh, it's still there also uh, if you're looking for ties you can buy them easily secondhand if they're in good condition and there's no need and also when i just remember uh, i have the first pair of santoni shoes i bought them 10 years ago and they are still in good quality if you're taking care of the shoes they will last forever so uh, he has a good point uh, and besides that also my ebay shop is based on that concept uh, I have uh, secondhand clothes, so that's a good thing. You should keep an eye on that. What are the 12 expensive items that are worth their money? In my opinion, the first one is a large leather weekender or duffel bag. Most quality leather bags will likely run you around $1,000 or more simply because of the high end leather. Ideally, you want it to be leather lined without having the extra weight. I've received lots of compliments from my leather weekender because it has a wonderful leather. <laughs> One thing you have to know, okay, uh, Mr. Schneider, he is a really classic guy and he's dressing up. I mean, I, 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 I like his style. It's not how I dress, but uh, <laughs> what to do, it's, it's nice to look at. Um, and uh, we have two different kind of styles, but his way to dress and his look is, yeah, very, very, yeah, classic, but nice to see. Not a lot of people dress it's like this. It's a classic this. brown tone, which is nothing special. However, it is chrome tanned in Italy and has a nice pull-up effect. It's simply much more stylish and elegant than a nylon bag or a canvas bag. It will also last longer and therefore the cost per wear is low. The second expensive item. <laughs> yeah, he's right. So a duffel bag is definitely also one of uh, my essentials. Uh, unfortunately, you know, leather is not my kind of thing in this way. So, um, so what I got is uh, this uh, nylon bag from Gucci. I put on some different kind of watch themed stuff. Uh, this is my duffel bag and it's also, you know, indestructible. And this is definitely one of my most used bags. It's a pair of quality socks. At $40, it's relatively expensive. And if you go with materials like silk or cashmere, you go up to 75 or 100, $120. Obviously, you can buy a pair of socks for a dollar or less. The problem is, especially if you want over the calf socks, is that they always slide down. On top of that, the material. I really, I, I hate this look, okay? If someone sitting, uh, let's say I'm, I'm in a hotel or somewhere and I spot something like this, it's just horrible. Tom Ford said something quite interesting, uh, just remember, let me... Uh, point 16, always new socks and underwear, throw the old ones uh, uh, away every six months. Yeah? And this is very important, this is a, just a slightly thing, but if I spot a gentleman wearing socks which are, you know, washed off or something, it's just, it destroys everything and shows me his mentality in some way, so I'm 100% on his, on his side, it's a small thing. But if you are wearing a suit or something, you need to wear the proper socks. It's really important, at least for me. At the same time, quality socks that are more expensive come in different sizes. For example, Fort Belvedere's offers four sizes, so you get exactly the right fit for your foot. Because we... <laughs> you probably know the feeling when you have uh, two big socks and they are just, you know, hanging there and it's just really awkward. Yeah. 
Maybe you know that feeling, or maybe I'm the only one. The third one that is worth its money is an overcoat. Yes, oh, you have an overcoat. 100% overcoats are the thing. Believe it or not, I, I love to have them. But it's a German thing. Uh, Victoria, my, my wife, she's working at Boininger and the German people likes the, the German people like to to buy jackets and coats. Yeah, I have around six six coats, six different coats. My number one coat is uh, from, from uh, Loro Piana. No, no, no. My number one coat is from Cesare Artolini. This is the most expensive item I've ever bought regarding clothes. You know, I worked there, but on the on the label it said uh, four thousand euro. I just bought it for cost price. So just to give you an idea, this is uh, full cashmere. And it's unlined, so you have just one line of fabric. Isn't that amazing? Everything is done by hand with some patch pockets. I just love this coat. You can, you know, pack it together. It will never wrinkle. Isn't that amazing? It's uh, from uh, Loro Piana. I don't know the price. I think back in the day it was uh, 1,500 euro. But I don't pay that price. They always have this kind of inlining. One of the high quality stuff. It also cannot wrinkle. You can do anything with it. It's a raincoat. I just love this piece. And they always have here uh, this suede leather with the logo, nice thing. Coats for less than $200, but a quality overcoat from natural materials such as wool or cashmere will run you at least $1,000 or more. Yeah. Not only does it keep you warm during the cold months of the year, but it's also very stylish. You can... But you should check out the secondhand stuff for coats, believe me. On top of the suit, a jacket, or just your regular sweater. Basically, all the overcoats in my collection are vintage, and I was able oh. to get quality pieces at a very low price. It ranges from a vintage Chester Berry paletot overcoat with a velvet collar to a British warm or just a Casentino style double breasted really heavy navy overcoat that I found at Bobby from Boston. The fourth expensive item that's worth its money is a nice pair of well-fitting gloves. Usually price point wise <laughs> you have to invest between $150. If you want to go with peccary leather we're talking more about $300 plus. Uh, you know if you are developing yourself also this kind of taste yeah then everyone goes through a phase okay there is a phase of uh, <laughs> of uh, shoe carrying products like polish and everything then you buy every at least in in my life i bought everything regarding this i had also the phase uh, for gloves yeah then I bought around uh, I don't know in one season let's say seven or eight pairs of, of, of gloves all different kind of leather and lining not lining I never used them it's good to have them though I don't I, 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 I didn't wear them since maybe over one year but uh, I don't want to throw them away you know it's nice to have them in my head I know that I have a huge collection. First of all, your gloves should fit tightly and they should be... And if you use them, you know, it fits 100% to the outfit. This is just amazing if you have to say, ah, so what, what should I tell you? You're made of a soft glove leather that stretches with the movements of your hands. You also want quirks between the fingers because it increases yeah. the range of movement and makes it more comfortable. To learn more about glove letters, please check out our glove letter guide here. You want <laughs> a glove letter, letter uh, a glove guide. Of course, he has a video for this, but he has a video for everything, okay? For pinky rings, for regular rings, for ties, for suits, for gloves. This guy, if you are into gentleman stuff, He's the one. sewn either by hand or by machine, and you want something that just gets better with age. For example, Lamb Napa is really soft and very nice, but it will wear out more quickly than Peccary leather, which is really made to last. The fifth item that is worth its money is a pair of precious metal cufflinks. Price-wise, it can range all the way from $300 up to $25,000. So why should you invest in a pair of cufflinks? It's simply one of those few jewelry items for men, apart from a ring, that look very dapper, elegant, and classic. Most modern cufflinks these days are made in China. They're not made out of precious metal. They look cheap, gaudy, and they're quite loud. On the other hand, classic cufflinks, for example, knots or... Yeah, this would also be my first suggestion. I need to check which one was the first pair. So I have uh, quite a few acquired over the years, uh, but the first set, they are made out of sterling silver. Just, uh, yeah, they're, there's nothing extraordinary, just a classic. Uh, kind of look at just a ball on on the hand. Oh, uh, just a ball with this kind of uh, you know you can put it in the cuff and uh, yeah it's a nice thing it lasts forever. You will give it to your child inshallah when you uh, when you have one. So if you buy this one high quality, I also have some cheap uh, China stuff. For example uh, here this one, I got it from Africa for five euro. 
I don't wear it that often, but it's nice if I have yellow, uh, a yellow tie, then this combines very well. The sixth item that I think you should invest in are pinky rings. They're just a wonderful <laughs> addition to a... <laughs> Uh, he's definitely not a commercial kind of guy. You, you should invest in pinky rings. <laughs> you know, I, I like to wear them. What can I say? Classic gentleman's wardrobe, and it's not something a lot of other people will wear. Yeah. The problem is, it's very difficult to find classic shapes in nice materials such as sterling silver or gold on the market today. Yeah, that's, that's right. Uh, you know, he has a special video just about this series and I checked eBay uh, because I want the green. I want with some, some uh, I want a ring with malachit, but I don't find it anywhere. I have to go custom and spend several thousand dollars on the ring or you go vintage, but it costs a lot of time. And you often yeah. find lots of crappy rings. Personally, For all sure. the rings in my collection right now are vintage. They range from sterling silver all the way to solid 18 karat gold and anything in between. Because it's so difficult to find new ones, we're currently working on them, so stay tuned. Yeah, so my uh, favorite pinky ring I did myself. I just got, uh, I just went to the jeweler who we are working with and I had, I had an idea. So it's a gorilla uh, with a stone inside of his mouth and his, uh, it's made out of sterling silver. Uh, the gemstone, I don't remember, to pass maybe. And his eye has a diamond inside. And the other side is a, ru ru uh, it's a ruby. The seventh item worth investing in is a Mont Blanc Meisterstück fountain pen. Of course, there are lots yeah. of other great manufacturers of fountain pens, Italian ones such as Omas, maybe Parker, or you name it. However, the Mont Blanc Meisterstück pen has been around for a very long time. Don't be that guy that buys a Mont Blanc ball pen, okay? Just buy the fountain pen. It's just nice to write and you know, if you pull out this and write down your signature with the ink, uh, with a fountain pen, it's just a different kind of style and I, I, I love to write with it. Eighth item worth its money is a pair of Goodyear welted shoes. Oh. Which style you want heavily depends yeah, this will not on be what mine, kind of lifestyle you I get his point. A Goodyear welted pair of shoes. Now, price-wise, you can spend either $200 or $3,000 on a pair of Goodyear shoes. Of course, the difference is the quality of the leather the patina or the hand coloring, the finish, also the bottom and the details are gonna be much more intricate on higher end shoes. Yeah, the cheapest shoe I have is around, let's say classic menswear, okay, is, uh, I don't know, maybe 300 from Magnani uh, or maybe 250 it costs. And uh, regular price from shoes I wear, they're somewhere, let's say, between the regular price. I, I get them often on discount, but uh, let's say 700 euro is the normal price for Santoni shoes. And then I have also some from Paolo Scafora. They are a little bit more expensive. If you are invest this kind of money and take care of the product, it will last forever. So I feel him. More expensive shoes will probably have a hand stitched to your weld. Yeah, have that's nice important. Waist and a lot more time went into the construction of that shoe. Of course, if you spend $2,000 or more, you also can get a custom Goodyear welted shoe, and that's just a wonderful experience because it really is perfectly suited to your foot and your foot. Yeah. If you are going into you know, classic shoes, don't want to spend that amount of money. Uh, I remember Crooked and Jones. They have some good products. I don't use them myself, but I always see you know, the price range is good, classic style. The ninth expensive item worth investing in is a quality belt. Oh, I know, belts yes. are probably not something you might deem expensive because you can find them for $10, but you can also find some for $3,000. In my experience, a quality belt costs upwards of about $150. Mm, the yeah. difference, of course, with quality belts is that they all have a high-end leather material on the inside as well as on the outside and also on the lining. Now, most belts today, including quality belts, are edge painted, which means the leather is cut on the edges and then burnished and painted to create a uniform look. Yeah. The really high quality belts are thinned out at the edges, which means you need more leather, and then they're folded and sewn together. This is a really important part because, uh, for example, my belts are also more than five to ten years old. They are just, you know, Never, you cannot wear them off because they're very stiff leather, strong leather, and they are lined this way. Uh, if you invest in a high quality belt, uh, it's worth its money for sure. If money is of no concern to you, you may want to look into solid 925 sterling silver. 
<laughs> I'm not in this position to look at this kind of uh, buckles, but interesting to see. Sterling silver from MS. Okay. Buckles or solid 14 or 18 karat gold buckles. <laughs> if it's 18 karat gold, that's uh, some expensive stuff right here. Now that's a whole other level and the buckle itself will be worth more than the entire belt itself. <laughs> Is it? And the buckle will be more expensive than your whole outfit. <laughs> Worth it. At the end, thank you very much for watching. This was the 12th item. And if you're interested in high quality men's wear stuff, then check out uh, his channel, The Gentleman's Gazette. And I hope you like that content. Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you would like to. And then I see you guys next time.